What's up, everybody? This is Gray Man here. I hope everybody's doing well today. Uh, so this should be a, hopefully a relatively quick video. I know I say that all the time, and they kind of get lengthy at times, but uh, we'll see what happens, right? Well, today we're going to discuss five uses for coffee grounds in the garden. And the reason I chose this topic for today is a lot of us drink coffee. Uh, we have these conversations all the time in the live streams and the chats and whatnot. And if you guys know, I'm an avid coffee drinker. And uh, so I've been doing a lot of research because I've heard coffee grounds can do well in garden, uh, depending on what you're growing and how you use it. So I decided to pick up five things that I enjoy uh, using coffee grounds in my garden. Uh, and hopefully this will get, like I always like to say, uh, get the juices flowing. And uh, if you guys out there, uh, you the viewer, uh, have uses for coffee grounds uh, in your garden, or if you use them for whatever purposes that you use them for, uh, please drop them down in the comments below. I'd like to hear back from you uh, because this is a sh caring and sharing community. And what I mean by that is a lot of us folks exchange ideas and we care about what other people are doing and how they use certain things, uh, be it if they're using it correctly or if they're using it wrong. Uh, it's great to hear the advice from you, the viewer, as well, uh, outside of just coming from me. All right, so let's dive into this. Coffee. Mm -mm -mm. How do I love coffee? That morning cup of coffee is phenomenal. A lot of people will throw their grounds away. Well, that being said, one of the number one things that you can use coffee for is uh, mulch. Uh, believe it or not, coffee grounds make an excellent ground mulch, especially for acid-loving plants. Now, to give you kind of an idea of the plants that I'm talking about, are ones, let's say, like uh, blueberry plants, uh, or blueberry bushes, however you like to call it, <laughs> huckleberry, holly bushes, and so on. But it doesn't stop there. It also helps with vegetables, and certain vegetables like uh, acidic soil. Uh, for instance, you know, uh, you know, all different types of peppers love acidic oil, radishes, sweet potatoes, uh, eggplants, uh, parsley, rhubarb, uh, regular potatoes. Now, I know if you live in Idaho, the grounds are already, the soil there is a little acidic already. Uh, but again, as always with anything, do your research. Um, also, coffee can be used as a form of protection. So for number two, we're going to look at coffee grounds uh, used for plant protection or like a ring of protection, kind of like that force field of protection, right? Um, because sometimes you'll come across things like slugs or snails uh, and so on uh, that might be attacking, let's say, your strawberries uh, what else? Uh, you're munching on your lettuce, uh, you know, anything in your vegetable garden that sl uh, slugs or snails uh, may mess with, or even ants, uh, ants that are, you know, invading your tomato plants and whatnot. And you guys know I grow lots of tomatoes or are trying to, right? And uh, so there's a way to use coffee grounds uh, to kind of offer your plants a little bit of protection along with all the other things that you do. You know, placing a protective ring around your garden uh, can be very uh, useful uh, in regards to vulnerable plants. Uh, you can also try, some people use diatomaceous earth uh, as a ring around their plants as well or around their soil. Uh, but there's some issues with that. Some people have issues. Some people love it. Some people hate it, you know, because of what it does to specific other insects, let's say like bees and whatnot. So uh, I think coffee might be a, an option if you are worried about using diatomaceous earth. What else? Uh, let me see. Uh, a lot of, you know, pets, uh, pests or insects, however you uh, prefer to... Uh, you know, look at that term, just like the smell, the toxicity, uh, or not, not the toxicity, my apologies, the acidity, the texture of the coffee grounds, um, what else? Come on, Gray, you can think of it. Uh, and, and, and it's just like uh, certain animals, or not animals, but insects and pests just don't like it. And uh, here's, the, here's the most positive thing about it is it's all natural. Uh, and, it, and you can avoid using any other, other toxic substances in, in your garden uh, or pesticides around the food that you consume. So this is why I love coffee grounds because a lot of folks will have this. And a matter of fact, I'm going to, if you're not a coffee drinker, I have a tip for you at the end of this video. Um, another thing, uh, coffee grounds can be used as a fertilizer. Yes, I'll reiterate that I said fertilizer. <laughs> Some people are like, Gray, what do you mean uh, uh, fertilizer and one thing it's free and it's effective uh, you have to look at um, maybe maybe I'll put them up here you know put them over here put them right here uh, the names of it because I know I have a list somewhere here I can put that up so I don't forget that list of uh, nutrients that coffee uh, grounds have uh, nitrogen phosphorus potassium copper and magnesium so if you have certain plants that depend on these nutrients uh, you can substitute coffee grounds uh, for a kind of a fertilizer now I did write down 
what you would need and how to do this. Uh, I'm going to be applying this uh, as well, uh, so you guys can experiment. And as with anything, do your own research. Uh, you might want to have a specific plant that you're going to play with first before you apply something like this to your entire garden, uh, because you want to, you know, kind of adjust and play and see how your your plants work with it. But anyways, here on the notes it says put about one half pound of used coffee grinds in a five gallon bucket, fill with water, and stir. It says let this sit for a few days to allow the nutrients from the coffee to seep into the water. The resulting brew is your liquid fertilizer. This is an excellent alternative to store-bought chemical fertilizers which contain harmful chemicals like uh, petro uh, chemicals, arsenic, and cadmium. So as you can see, it's another uh, free alternative source and some people say well great it's not free I buy coffee which is understandable but I can tell you a way that you can get free coffee again tip at the end um, and from my understanding I know I don't grow roses but some folks do and uh, as I was researching coffee and stuff like that because like I said again I'm a heavy coffee drinker and I was like well I'm, you know you always throw these things away and I'm always trying to find ways to reuse products uh, with that preparedness mindset of mine I'm always thinking of not throwing things away and reusing them or finding a way to reuse them uh, whereas if you, you invest so much money in this, well, what could it save me if I reuse this product? Kind of how we talked about the seeds and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, roses, uh, roses like the acidic soil uh, and stuff like that, and uh, they just like uh, that coffee fertilizer. But that's for you folks. If you guys grow roses, uh, let me know down in the comments if you do use like a liquid coffee fertilizer for your plants because I'm looking forward to hearing from you as always. Um, also, number four. <laughs> And uh, I thought this was interesting because I've had this problem because we have some neighbor kitties. Uh, but coffee grounds can be used to shoo away your neighborhood cats or your own cats to keep them away from your plants. Uh, cats can be somewhat of a nuisance. They can be attacking some of your vegetables and playing with them and har being harmful towards them. Uh, they can also be digging up and digging in through your garden if you have a garden that they can get into. Uh, don't get me wrong, uh, some folks love cats to death, uh, we have a cat, but they can be a bit destructive at times. So if you want to kind of protect your garden area, you can use coffee grounds from it. And the reason being this is, is because you know how we in lo we love, most folks, most folks love the smell of that aroma of that freshly brewed coffee every single morning, man, the smell of it, just even the smell of it just wakes me up. Um, I, you know, I've always, I even bought air fresheners that have this coffee smell, but it's nothing like the, the fresh brewed coffee, uh, especially the coffee that I drink, Cafe Bustelo, man, it, it just permeates through the house, uh, and it's just, I love the smell of coffee. But to get to the point, cats do not like the smell of coffee. I did not know that until I was doing research, and I was like, wow, that's a good one to add, um, because for some reason, uh, like how we love the smell of it, they do not. Um, so cats are somewhat repelled from the smell of coffee. So spreading some coffee grounds around your soil uh, or on the edge of your garden can help possibly keep some of these, either your cat or your neighborhood cats, away from your garden uh, and, you know, let's say destroying some of your, your work that you've put into your garden. Because the last thing you want to do is you're already fighting pets, you're already fighting the weather, you're doing all this other stuff like that, and the last thing you need is a neighborhood cat or your own cat messing with your stuff. So this is a nice, nice preventative measure uh, to keep cats away and out of your garden. Number five, I had no clue of. I decided to add this one because a lot of folks are always talking about mushrooms. Well, one of the most common mushrooms ate or consumed in the world and easy to grow. Um, other than outside, there's a few other mushrooms, but a lot of you folks may have heard of the oyster mush mushroom. Uh, that one is, uh, I guess it's really, really simple to grow. And a lot of people will use, uh, what is the word, uh, pasteurized straw to grow these mushrooms. Um, but you can use the substrate. You can use coffee grounds as a substrate. Uh, for that, and the reason being is uh, because once you brew your coffee, it, it's already the, the, the substrate's already pasteurized, if that makes any sense, uh, through it because you're running the hot water and so on and so forth. So you can use coffee grounds as a substrate to grow uh, these oyster mushrooms. Um, let me see here, uh, and like I said, it encourages plant growth, um, and like I said, it automatically pasteurizes uh, your mushroom substrate. Now, of course, you'll need, uh, what's it called, the... Uh, that's the word I'm looking for. You can do it gray. Uh, you'll need the spores, of course, and whatnot to grow these mushrooms. But it's just an option if someone who wants to try to grow their own mushrooms on that kind of substrate, it's an option. So I thought that was kind of neat. So there's a, at least five, uh, some five uses that you can use in your vegetable garden or let's say a mushroom garden, however that you want to do it, um, that can help you uh, save some money for one, especially if you're an avid coffee drinker. Now, some folks will say, well, and, you know, I spend a lot of money on coffee. Well, come to find out, folks, uh, 
you can uh, you can go visit your, let's say like a Starbucks. Uh, some people don't like Starbucks, but you can visit local coffee shops and things like that. Uh, and they're usually willing to give away their used coffee grounds. Uh, they put them in buckets or whatnot, and you can get these for free. Most of the times, these places, uh, again, like your coffee shops or Starbucks or wherever that you prefer to get your coffee at, if you happen to visit a coffee shop and spend that kind of money, um, they're usually, even if you don't go there, maybe you should go there just to get a quick cup of coffee just for fun. And, hey, do you have any coffee grounds that you want to give away? That way you can obtain free coffee grounds uh, from these places. Um, so that is an option for you non-coffee drinkers or even you coffee drinkers who, who don't drink enough coffee and don't have enough uh, coffee grounds uh, to explore this option. Just anything that I can come up with on the channel to kind of point people in a direction of getting something e either you know very cheap or absolutely free, um, I like to share with the community. So that being said, hopefully I got some, uh, some like I said, those, those juices moving. Uh, you guys will start thinking about this, and I'm, hopefully I'll get some uh, comments down below in regards to some of the other folks uh, that use coffee in different ways, or coffee grounds, or even the, the coffee itself. I'm always curious to hear your thoughts and your ideas, uh, so please put them down in the comments. And if, as always, if you got any value out of this video, if you could please hit that thumbs up, uh, it would be truly appreciated. Well, that about wraps up this one, a uh, little short video here, hopefully right. Uh, and uh, other than that, I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with my guest Frontier Preppers. Billy and Dee will be joining me tomorrow night, uh, and we're going to be diving into some interesting topics uh, in regards to stuff like, uh, you know, they, their move from Florida to uh, Alaska, where they currently live, and uh, a little bit about Billy's history, uh, you know, and... and uh, and, and I don't want to kind of destroy this video in regards to what we're going to be talking about, but stay tuned. It's going to be quite the interesting live stream. So join us tomorrow night, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Other than that, this is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys in the rebound. God bless and have a beautiful day.